I am Casey Oswald. I am a dream builder, go-getter, outgoing entrepreneur. I love talking and collaborating with like-minded women. I enjoy building communities of positive people working towards common goals. Um, I always enjoy surrounding myself with positive people and yeah, that's just a little bit about who I am. So each week I go live to share some of the tools that I have used in my business to help meet my goals. And as we transition from the final quarter of 2021 and move into the first quarter of 2022, it is crucial that we set our goals for the future. In reviewing our results of our 2021 goals, we can learn important information. According to November 18th, 2021 article, how to set effective New Year's goals for 2022. One key is to develop approach-oriented goals rather than avoidance-oriented goals. Approach-oriented goals sound like this. I will build a trusting community with my clients so that my business can grow and be more successful. This way of thinking keeps us positive and striving toward the future. Forbes article went on to say that long-term success is more likely when approach-oriented goals are used. So put in the chat box, have you already started writing goals? Can you develop an approach-oriented goal using what you've already um, started? The second key component is to take a look back at your current year's goal. What went well? And I'm trying to get back to my place. So what went well with that goal? Were you able to accomplish your goal? Um, what goals were you unable to achieve? Did this occur due to lack of resources? Or was it an unforeseen circumstance? I know lately, these past couple of years have been totally different. So um, yeah, very. I mean, unforeseen circumstances have been popping up all over lately. So what happened to your goals from the current year? How are we going to make our next goals better? One way to think critically about your goals is to use the SMART goals framework. Through this method, you are able to lay out a roadmap for your plan. When you complete this on paper, it can vastly decrease the mind clutter. That happens when taking on what feels like an overwhelming task. So let's take a look at each step of SMART goal method and how it applies to you and your business. So we have S, specific, M, measurable, A, achievable or attainable, R, realistic, T, time or time bound. So have you guys heard of SMART goals before? Let me know in the chat. Have you used SMART goals? I've used this before. I've used this in classrooms as well. Um, I know lots of people that use SMART goals. Some people say SMART goals may be just like a starting point as well. So let's get into SMART goals a little bit more. So S is specific. So let's start with specific. Get very clear on what it is you want to accomplish how you will accomplish it, and why. Why is this goal important to you? So Paul J. Meyer is a businessman, author, and founder of Success Motivation International. He describes characteristics of SMART goals in his 2003 book, Attitude is Everything, if you want to succeed above and beyond. I thought that's a great place to get some info. So he says specific, your goal should be clear and specific, otherwise, you won't be able to focus your efforts or feel truly motivated to achieve it. When drafting your goal, try to answer the five W questions, right? The what, why, who, where, and which. So what do I want to accomplish? Why is this goal important? Who is involved? Where is it located? Which resources or limits are involved? Um, so imagine that you're currently mar a marketing executive and you'd like to become head of marketing. So your goal could be, I want to gain skills and experience necessary to become head of marketing within my organization so that I can build my career and lead a successful team. I thought that was a great, great example. So let's see, M, measurable. How will you measure your progress? For many of us, we need to break things down into smaller goals or steps along the way. For me, definitely, I have to break them up smaller. <clears throat> it's a great idea to have checkpoints along the way to allow for you to reflect on your progress. 
celebrate your wins and maybe redefine your short-term goals if something isn't working for you. Think about it. If you can't measure your progress, how can you manage it? Weekly or monthly checkpoints can, be, can help you be accountable while working toward your goals. So make them measurable. It's important to have measurable goals so that you can track your progress and it helps you to stay motivated. So a measurable, measurable goal should address questions such as how much, how many, how will I know when it's accomplished? You might measure your goal of acquiring the skills to become head of marketing by determining that you will have completed the necessary training courses or gained the relevant experience within five years time. So that would be a measurable goal. All right, let's keep going here. Achievable or attainable. This is where the rubber meets the road. So you can't just talk the talk, you've got to walk the walk. Writing action-based goals will help you determine what resources you have and what resources you need to achieve your goals. If you are uncertain of any of the steps needed to meet the checkpoints along the way, don't be afraid to reach out for help. Don't let your pride or your fear from asking for help get in your way. Some of the most successful people were able to achieve their goals by recognizing the need to build a support team around them. I love having a team. <laughs> I love building like communities and teams and support. Just, yeah, I think of masterminds, just collaborations, everyone getting together and just talking things out. Um, so an achievable goal will usually answer the question such as, how can I accomplish this goal? How realistic is this goal based on other constraints such as financial factors? So are you surrounding yourself with like-minded people? Are you specifically paying people to do X, Y, and Z to achieve that goal? So are there finance issues, things like that? So example, you might need to ask yourself whether developing the skills required to become head of marketing is realistic based on your existing experience and qualifications. So for example, do you have the time to complete the required training effectively? So if you say I'm gonna have X, Y, Z done in a month, but the training takes a year, you know, is that going to be an effective goal? Are the necessary resources available to you? Can you afford to do it? I did like this tip. So beware setting goals that someone else has a power over. For example, get that promotion. Depends on who else applies and on the recruiter's decision, but get the experience and training that I need to be considered for that promotion is entirely down to you. So I think that makes sense, right? You can't, your goal can't be to get that promotion if it's out of your hands, but it could be to work hard and earn that spot, right? Have you thought of any goals for next year, friends? Put them in the chat. I do call everybody friends. I think that's the kindergarten teacher in me. So, all right, we are in R. R is realistic. Is your goal relevant to your life and realistic in your ability to achieve it? Evaluate where you are and what you have available to use. If your goal is unrealistic, you will lose your motivation to achieve it. I do want to offer here that although it is important to be realistic, there are a lot of successful people who had a goal that others told them was unrealistic. How many have done that? I mean, there are so many women in this group, in the Women Helping Women group, that probably were told that they couldn't do something, right? But yet you're striving to achieve it. And, you know, back in the day, I was told that, oh, girls shouldn't go in the military. You shouldn't go to the Air Force. Oh, you're not going to do that. That's for boys. I heard that a lot. And I have to say, the more people told me I couldn't do it, the more I wanted to do it. So you want your goal to be realistic, but it's your realistic. It's not everybody else telling you. So realistic or relevant. So this step is about ensuring that your goal matters to you. And then it also aligns with other relevant goals. So a relevant goal or a realistic goal can answer yes to the questions like, does this seem worthwhile? Is this the right time? Does this match our other efforts or other needs? Am I the right person to reach this goal? Is it applicable in the current socioeconomic environment? All right, so you might want to gain the skills to become head of marketing within your organization, but is it the right time to undertake the required training or work toward additional certifications or qualifications? Are you sure that you're the right person for head of marketing? Maybe you are, maybe you are the right fit and maybe you're not the right fit at that time. 
have you considered your spouse's goals? I thought that was really interesting too. So if you have a spouse or a significant other, are, are your goals like going to clash? Are they going to match, right? So for example, if you want to start a family, would completing training in your free time make this more difficult? Hmm. So just a couple of things to think about. Let's keep going here. We have time. So time, set a clear and specific date for completion of the goal. Acknowledge specific obstacles, which may crop up along the way. Things will happen, which may make you miss your target date for your goals. It's natural to experience disappointment when this happens, but don't beat yourself up over it. Instead, determine what interfered and caused you to not meet your checkpoint. Make adjustments and get back to work. This makes me think of when I had weight goals in the past. I, you know, still, <laughs> but when I had them in the past, if I missed a day or I didn't attain something, I would want to quit. But you know what? A couple of years ago, I worked through it and lost 50 pounds. And it was not easy, especially when I had setbacks and I blew out my knee. And then you're like, well, forget it now, <laughs> right? But if I had let all those things that came up along the way stop me. I would never have met my goal, even though it was later than I planned. So you just might have to be a little bit flexible with that, but don't get discouraged. Even a small setback may not set back your whole vision for later on. Might just be a little bit. So let's see, we are on time. Every goal needs a target date so that you have a deadline to focus on and something to work toward. This part of the SMART goal criteria helps to prevent everyday tasks from taking priority over your long-term goals. I'm a little guilty on this one. I will keep pushing things off and trying to get other things done. And guys, I really wanna know that if it's the mom and me or the wife or whatever, but a lot of times I want people to see what I accomplished. So when I have to do stuff on the computer, I sometimes feel guilty like uh, I sat all day at the computer, even though I was working towards my goal and getting so much done, but then like the house is a mess or something. And then it makes me feel guilty like when somebody comes in, they're gonna think I sat and did nothing all day. So it's something I really had to, um, to kind of change my mindset on. Working at the computer and taking this time to build my business is very important, whether people can see it or not, because I am taking the time to better myself and better my business. So kind of went off on a little tangent there, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying. I know many of you get that. So a time-bound goal will usually answer when? What can I do six months from now? What can I do six weeks from now? What can I do today? I think that's very important that I want to add to of my vision board. What can I do today, right? Okay, so besides setting up SMART goals, I also like to organize myself by creating schedules on my whiteboard in my office. I should send a picture of this. <laughs> it helps me stay on track. And another great option can be to create a vision board. This is a true story. So my husband and I used to do something fun when we were young. Like we weren't even 20 years old yet. We got married at 18 and then we moved to Florida or the military moved us to Florida. We enjoyed dressing up. So we looked wealthy, not really wealthy, but just so, you know, you could go into all these open houses that were expensive. And so we would dress up a little bit and we would go to all these open houses at really expensive homes. We would like take pictures and dream build or see something in a magazine, remember that house, and we would put up on our vision board. And the interesting thing is now we invest in real estate. So I find that just kind of ironic, but it just goes to show that vision boards or having a vision really helps. So setting, yeah, setting SMART goals is the first step in helping make 2022 a great year for your business. Remember how in the achievable and realistic steps of the SMART goals, you look at your resources. So I use Groove. Groove is one of those resources you can use. There are over 20 different free tools you can use at Groove to help meet your SMART goals in the new year. So I can also be a resource for you on your journey. Don't be afraid to reach out to others for help. Surrounding yourself with others who are also made motivated to crush their goals is helpful. And that's what Women Helping Women does for us. I am just so excited for 2022. Um, I've got I've got 
challenge going on with working out and stuff. And I have other women involved in it as well. And I'm just super excited to be, um, to be a part of this amazing Women Helping Women group. Let's see, Mary says, you are so right, Casey. Women can blow the ceiling off of any preconceived limitations. Yes, we are, we are super strong. So I am so excited for 2022, guys. Let's do this. So until next time, stay groovy, and I will see you next week. Yes, I will see you next week. Um, same time, same channel, everybody. All right, have a great day. Thank you so much for coming. And if you, oh, if you have questions, you can email me, casey.oswald at gmail.com. I will put it in the comment section um, if you have questions on Groove or just need someone to chat and get ready for goals for 2022. I have um, a group of women we're going to meal prep and meal plan over Zoom, right? <laughs> so who would have thought? So it's something I've done in the past, not on Zoom, but we are going to start 2022 off ready to go. So I love chatting goals. Let me know if you have questions and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.